Today on Rift Spirits and Gear, we go over the history of the two channel rectifier amplifiers from Mesa Boogie. My love of rectifier amplifiers can be traced back to the summer, I believe about summer 1994 when I started playing guitar and growing up in the Seattle area in the heart of the crunch movement, everywhere I turned, I either heard or saw Mesa Boogie amplifiers. And that makes sense. I mean, a lot of the bands were using them at the time. We're two states away from California where the Mesa Boogie amplifiers are made in Petaluma. And I just fell in love with the sound of those darn rectifier amplifiers. And over the years, there has been a lot of misinformation and old information, especially on the guitar forums and such, uh, as to the various revision or circuit types within the two channel rectifier amplifiers, especially the early ones. So I have made a video dispelling a lot of those rumors, getting down to the nitty gritty facts of the individual builds themselves. And I just wanted to put all of the information that I have learned into one central place, this video. Now, if you don't wanna watch this video, I have also put all of the information that we're about to talk about into a website called the rectifierguide.com, which I will link down below in the description. But yeah, let's, uh, let's just jump into it, shall we? So the rectifier series started development in 1989 and the patent for the dual rectifier was granted in 1991, which saw the release of the actual dual rectifier amplifier in February of 1992. Now, this first amplifier would have been a revision C circuit as it, prototypes uh, A and B were just that. They were prototypes and then were never released to the public. The prototype amplifiers were built into Mark IV chassis, but I think it's really interesting that even in the earliest days of the rectifier series, Randall Smith still had the EL34 to 6L6 power tube switching right in just the early baby models, which is super cool. And how much foresight Randall Smith had. Now, George Lynch played a revision C dual rectifier uh, back in the 90s for the Dawkin reunion tours. And it was George that was documented as being the first person to really mention the various circuit revisions of the dual rectifier. Now he used to say the first 500 had special transformers or sounded different than the rest of them. And we know now that that actually isn't true. I think that was more speculation on his part or something like that. But revision C lasted till approximately serial number 279. Now Boogie were never one to just kind of rest on a design if they thought there was room for improvement. So hot on the heels of revision C, you have revision D. And revision D started approximately amplifier 280 and it lasted until serial number 503 that I could find evidence of. Um, revision D is very close sonically to revision C. Revision D, I would describe my amplifier as kind of having the low end of a flat tire as a friend of mine described, but it doesn't have the typical rectifier characteristics. It has not huge low end. It has uh, a little bit of a upper mid kind of honk to it, uh, but it's definitely more 80s, I guess, an 80s kind of vibe, which makes sense because the original rectifier series were made for the 80s hair metal bands when they were designing the original circuit. They were very late in getting it out to the market, by the time the, the amplifier came out, the grunge thing had started happening. So they went back to the drawing board and kind of tweaked the circuit a little bit for future revisions. After revision D, we have the shortest revision of any of the rectifier amps, revision E, which lasted approximately 100 amplifiers. Now I own serial number 526, which is the earliest revision E that I have been able to verify, which is super cool. And one, my amplifier in particular is one of maybe three or four that I have seen that have factory chrome chassis and black tread plate, which was a hundred dollar option at the factory back in the day. So this amplifier would have cost $1,195 brand new in 1992. Cause again, we're still in 1992, but the revision E is a little barkier, a little, a uh, little brighter than C and D. Um, it kind of falls in between uh, D and F for me, but 
it really is pretty aggressive. It's a very, very aggressive circuit, but they were waiting uh, for the new circuit boards for the revision F, which is why this is kind of a stopgap in between revision D and revision F. I first heard about TrueFire from my friend Keith Williams over at 5 Watt World. Now he is always talking about it's better to improve your playing and spending time on your playing rather than spending time on buying gear. And I would have to agree with him at least partially. So I went and checked out TrueFire and what I found was amazing. And if you really want to dive into the deep end of learning and improving your guitar playing skills, you can get the all access pass which you know what, as the name implies, is all access. And you can just you can just start on down that learning brick road and see where the path takes you. Because you know what, you may end up somewhere unexpected. You may start in blues and end up in fusion. I don't know how you would do that, but you know what, I guess anything's possible. Big shout out to TrueFire for sponsoring this video. And if you wanna use the code FLUFF25, you can get 25% off of anything on the TrueFire website. Pretty cool. Thanks TrueFire. Next we have the most hyped revision of all of the rectifiers, we have revision F. Now revision F was a big revision for the rectifier circuit. First, you had a totally revamped clean channel uh, circuit wise. Uh, the, the clean channel was much improved, but you also saw the introduction of the triple rectifier and the rack mount dual rectifier as well. Now the earliest rev F that I was able to find was a serial number 643 and rev F uh, lasted all the way through serial number 3170, much, much later than previous thought. Um, I was pretty shocked to find that amplifier as well. But uh, in Rev F, you see the transition from uh, serial loop to parallel loop. You also see the transition from the earlier Mark III Schumacher transformers to the Mark IV transformers. Now, sonically, the transformers, the output and the power are identical according to Mesa Boogie. That's what they tell me. They simply just wanted less skews in the system because by that time in 1993, they had stopped making the Mark III and didn't see any reason to continue to make those power and output transformers. Makes total sense. Now, sonically, the Rev F is gonna have a real low mid grunt and have just a really nice mid range. This is not as scooped as a revision G that came after it. Now circuit wise, it is very, very similar to a revision G. However, they do sound a little different to my ears. Um, I own both uh, the dual and triple revision Fs, early ones, and they, yeah, they, they sound different than their G counterparts, but the internet has hyped these amplifiers up a ton. And uh, yeah, they're really great for metal. Metal guys, they love the Rev, Rev Fs. And finally, we come to Revision G. Now, Revision G would have been about 1994, and from 1994 to late 99, maybe February 2000, we have the Revision G series. Now, Revision G is what we think of as the classic rectifier tone that all of the bands were using. Corn Sublime, 311, Soundgarden, Disturbed, Linkin Park, Limp Bizkit, the list goes on and on and on. These were mostly revision G amplifiers. Now by 1994, the rectifier had finally taken off. It was a massive part of Mesa Boogie annual sales at this time. And you couldn't turn on the radio without hearing a rectifier. Facts, I was there at the time, I'm old, and every, every guitar tone you heard was generated, it seemed like, by a Mesa Boogie rectifier amplifier of some kind. Now, the Revision G ha was a huge jumping off point for a lot of the product line of Mesa Boogie. You had the dual rectifier, you had the triple rectifier, you now had the single rectifier, which is the 50 watt. You had the tremo verb, you had the recto verb, you had the blue angel, and you had the maverick. You had seven amplifiers by the end of the 90s that were all under the rectifier umbrella. That gives you an idea of how successful and popular the rectifier really was. And that's pretty much it for the history of the two channel rectifier series. I will link down below. Again, if you wanna really deep dive these amplifiers, rectifierguide.com, We uh, I list transformer numbers, tube types, I have photos, I have all sorts of cool stuff that I have collected 
over the years, I have some really cool anomalies, so a prototype amplifier, etc., etc. So if you love rectifiers as much as I do, this is definitely the website for you. You've been wonderful, I've been Fluff. Thank you so much for watching, and I will see you next time. If you liked the video you just watched, please consider subscribing. And if you wanna further support me and what I do, consider using some of the affiliate links down below in the description of this video. Go on over to Sweetwater, buy yourself something, and help me out at the same time. It's a win-win for both of us.